Maybe we do some mantra first. Sure. So we should go to the um, page number 26. Om Sarva Tatangata Amrita Shude Aryu Dharani Pushtin Guru Soha. So that's the uh, meditation. Uh, this image, do you see this image? Page number uh, 26. Eric, can you write it down next time to make sure if we use this text? Page number. We need a yeah. Do you have it? Yeah, that's one. Can you explain about the mantra? The sure. Mantra? Okay. Yes. Yeah. The mantra? Yes. Yeah. 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 America should be Ayurveda Pushtim Puri Swaha. So, Sarva Tathagata, Sarva means all. Tathagata means the thus, the ones who went like that. Remember in the Pranya Paramita Mantra when we read that Sutra, it says Mantra was Gate Gate, Paragate Parasamgate. So, the gun in, uh, in Sanskrit, in Buddhism, words to understand, the most important words to understand, often connect to the verb to go rather than in our English to understand you stand. It's because we we have a culture based on authority. So you stand under something and you kind of obey. It's actually very authoritarian, that word. And whereas in Sanskrit, when you understand something different, you go into another world because you understand it differently. So the gone part means having understood. And Tathagata is the name of a Buddha. And tata means such, or thus. And so, gata means gone to thus. Uh, it could also become Chinese translated rulai, which is rulai means come from thus. So, going or coming, ito han. Tata gata or tata agata, ito wan, same. So, um, so, that's the name of a Buddha, meaning one who has realized the nature of reality, is actually what it means. Tata gata. And in a way, by realizing it, they have transcended the ordinary reality, and they realize an extraordinary reality, Tathagata. So Sarva Tathagata means all Buddhas, but it refers to the Buddhas in a way, in a sense that, as beings that have understood the ultimate and both ultimate and relative natures of reality. So they understand everything about reality, Tathagata. Then, Amrita means deathless. Amrta. Murt means to die. Amrta means deathless. And it means elixir or of immortality. Amrta. Dudzi in Tibetan. Shuddha means pure or perfect. So Amrta Shuddha. And it's in the, because it's A, it's in the locative case. So it means in the pure deathlessness of all Tathagatas, of all Buddhas. In the pure deathlessness of all Buddhas. And it means Ayur, Dharani. Ayur means long life, lifespan, Ayur. Dharani means holding, Dharani. And Pushtin means expanding, Pushtin, growing, to grow, push, push, push to grow. So Ayur, Dharani, Pushtin means, and Kuruye means make it happen. So, so the mantra is, is a command, kind of where it says, Om, uh, may it be, may the holding of the long life of the lifespan grow in the purity of the deathlessness of all Buddha. That's sort of what, what it means. Although mantras are not mainly for the meaning. The mantras, but it's good to have under note to know the meaning. But then the repetition of the mantra means it's like creates uh, through sound uh, it creates the creates the fruit of the meaning by, by repeating and repeating and repeating, and um, 
when you practice it as a chant, you chant it. But when you meditate on it, and you visualize something going along probably with the visualization, maybe the visualization of this Mr. and Mrs. Buddha couple, uh, then uh, you uh, you are evoking the, that reality. In other words, you're evoking the growth of the maintenance of lifespan in the purity of the deathless elixir of all photographers. And the, the deathless elixir of all photographers, what that really means is and that's why, for example, you meditate Om Ahum, because the Om is said to mean the, the body of all Buddhas, which is an infinite body that incorporates all of us. You know, the idea is that the Buddha, from Buddha's point of view, our bodies and our minds are part of Buddha. There's no difference. So Buddha feels like a mother feels about her newborn child, like it's a part of her. You know, there's no differentiation between the two beings or lovers in some exceptional moments. They feel they are part of each other, they're one being. So Buddha always feels that all beings are the same as him or her. So Om means invokes the fact that I am part of Buddha's body. And then the A is that you know Buddha's speech is everywhere. That is the Dharma is being taught by the wind, by the earth, the water, the fire, uh, everything. And so the speech of the Buddha is everywhere. That's that red, infinite red light, ruby light. So diamond, ruby, speech presence of all Buddhas. And who is the invisible mind presence of all Buddhas, even in, in death. So there's no death because Buddha's mind incorporates all death and life. It's the same, it's the old same, infinite time. So, oh, sorry. So, um, I forgot. So, uh, oh. So, uh, I'll the same. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so. So Om that's Om Ahum. Ahum. So when you say Om Ahum, you are evoking the fact that you are one with body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas, and you in all circumstances. Absolutely. So therefore, in a way, what you're doing is you're projecting yourself as being already at the goal, because after all, we think we're separate from Buddha, and he thinks he's the same as us. He or she thinks he's the same as us. And therefore, he's, he's enlightened that we're not. <laughs> so, actually, when we repeat the mantra, we are joining with his view of us and say same with him. Oh, good, we're making the putting the medicine in the medicine, not the organ. So, so, that's how you say it. So, so we repeat it. We want to repeat the We usually give the long term. So, again, I want to repeat the mantra. <laughs> Pushing to the Om Sarva Tata Gata Amrita Shude Ayuta Vande Pushtim Guru Yesoha Om Sarva Tata Gata Amrita Shude Ayuta Vande Pushtim Guru Yesoha Om Sarva Tata Gata Amrita Shude Ayuta Vande Pushim Guru Yeswaha Om Sarvata Tagata Amrita Shuddhe Ayurta Vande Pushim Guru Yeswaha Om Sarvata Tagata Amrita Shuddhe Ayurta Vande Pushim Guru Yeswaha Om Sarvata Tagata Amrita Shuddhe Ayurta Vande 
So when we recite the mantra, uh, mantra means uh, mind protection. Okay, especially you are chanting chanting the mantras, but the, uh, the aim of mantra is to to protect our own mind. Okay, especially this mantra is called the mantra of uh, longevity and anti-aging. So as professor explained about Amrita, you know, immortal nectar energy. So we, when we recite this mantra, also it have to go. It must go with meditation. Okay. What is your meditation? So you have to imagine our mandala here. The mandala is like a botanic garden. Okay. So front of here, it's full of flowers and plants, medicinal flowers, healing plant, and so on. All are full. And then in the center, we have in that glass bowl, we have our medicine. Okay, children medicines, the, the nectar, what we take, what we take, the flowers and the minerals all mixed together. And so it is in a very huge and beautiful container. And then you imagine in the top of the container, there is the moonlight Buddha, Buddha Amitayus. It's called the infinite light Buddha, this one in union. And above the container, okay. So it's a botanic garden, that's medicine Buddha mandala. In the center, there is a beautiful container. It holds all our medicines, okay? The essence of uh, herbs, flowers, minerals, and you know, 
some part of metals and all these natural substances are here. And then in the top of the container there is the Buddha. So the Buddha is called infinite life Buddha in union. Normally it's a red color. And then when we recite the mantra, the Buddha starts to radiate. Okay? So the light of Buddha goes to the whole universe. Or goes to the whole uh, planet, and then the Buddha's light is uh, um, then the Buddha's light is uh, attracting Rupa and Ren. So attracting the essence, the pure energy from the nature. Okay. For example, the Buddha's light goes to the whole forest, and then the essence of the tree coming back here. Okay. First, there is expansion of light from the Buddha. It goes to the whole, whole uh, universe. And then there is attraction. So the light is taking the essence of the whole universe, dissolves into our medicine. Okay. It's a blessing the herbs through the mantras and meditation. Good. So normally, uh, you know, I think it's very different when we take the herbs with mantra and without mantra. So with mantra, uh, without mantra, of course, herbs uh, herbs uh, work because herbs they have different uh, uh, components, you know, different uh, substances inside, and that substances are helping our body. You know, it's more like physical level. But then there is a more energy level. That energy level we should increase through the meditation and the mantra. Okay. And then as we can say also the herbs, they have more like a spiritual blessing. If we do the mantra and meditation, and then we can access the spiritual blessing. Otherwise, we don't get herbs, the spiritual blessing, only the material uh, functions. Okay, so that's why so the Tibetan, uh, how do you say, this rejuvenation uh, medicine is very important to, to bless with uh, mantras and meditation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, like today in Tibet, there are some uh, Tibetan doctors, they do very traditional style. So they dry the herbs and mixing the herbs at the end of the, you know, all herbs are mixed. We, we Traditionally, we must bless with mantras, okay? So before the herbs are blessed by mantras and meditation, we should not use it. But today is different, you know, today many Tibetan herbal medicines are produced with machines and so on. But still some places in Tibet and they bless herbs with uh, mantras. But I think it's a very different uh, result, you know. Herbs with mantra, without mantra is a very different, different result. So according to Tibetan medicine, uh, we talked yesterday about 404 types of disease. And one is called the uh, 101 karmic disease, and 101 illusion disease, is like a psychosomatic disease, and 101 provocations. It means 101 types of disease are connected with uh, negative energy, negative spirits or negative energy. Okay, so those. These kind of problems we can only remove through the mantra and meditations. Mm -hmm. If we just take the herbs itself, if we cannot remove this kind of black energy or dark energy. Okay, only the mantras and meditation. Once the pills or medicine is blocked, are blessed, and then there is a hope to remove this 101 <coughs> disease. We call it provocation disease. Okay, and then we have 101. Disease connected with uh, elements, right? So it's uh, fire and wind, element, water and the earth. Okay, so I think it's good to know why it's so important to bless the herbs with uh, this mantra and meditation. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions about that? So that's why when you recite the mantra, it's a kind of also meditation. We call it the chanting meditation, chanting and meditating together. Okay, so your meditation is here, botanic garden, and then there is a beautiful container inside full of nectars, herbs and plants and so on. 
And then above there is a Buddha, it's called Infinite Light Buddha. And he is radiating, expanding the light, and then attracting or bring back the essence of the whole universe into our pills. Okay? And then later you eat these pills, then you feel the universal energy, universal, ha universal happiness. Okay? Then even you want to feel sad, you can't. <laughs> okay, any other questions about that? No? Okay, then we recite the mantra again together. <clears throat> so now you have to put your mind here, okay? Before we just did the mantra for training mantra, now you know how to chant. So if you don't feel chant, you don't need to chant. Just imagine, you know, lots of light coming here, okay? If it's difficult for you imagining Buddha radiating and so on, just imagine the light is coming from the universe and dissolve into our pelvis. Can you add this? Ah, yes, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Om Sarva Bhagavad Gita Ayutthaya Pushing good is Om Sarva Kadagata Amrita Shri Arutani Pushim Purunye Soma Om Sarva Kadagata Amrita Shri Arutani Pushim Purunye Soma Om Sarva Kadagata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Kuruji Saha Om Sarvadhyata Gata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Kuruji Saha Om Sarvadhyata Gata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Kuruji Om Sarvadhyata Gata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Purunye Soha Om Sarvadhyata Gata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Purunye Soha Om Sarvadhyata Gata Shri Arudhani Pushim Guru Yesoha Om Sarva Chakra Gata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Guru Yesoha Om Sarva Chakra Gata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Guru Yesoha Om Zara Kata Kata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Guru Yesoha Om Zara Kata Kata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Guru Yesoha Om Sarva Kata Kata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Guru Yesoha Om Sarva Kata Kata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Guru Yesoha Om Sarva Kata Kata Amrita Shri Arudhani Pushim Guru Yesoha Om Sarva Kata Kata Amrita Shri Arudhani 
substances is become full of the universal uh, energy it's become the nectar immortal nectar who wants to become immortal no? are you depressed 
Then you don't check any more filters, okay? <laughs> no, okay. Really are in more filters. Just the question, how are you going to enjoy it? That's the question. No okay, that's so that's it. This is a how to bless uh, medicines, okay? This one, if you want to recite the mantra 21 times every morning, you can recite that mantra. I think it's good, you know, if you like, especially if you like to uh, sing, singing, for chanting, so before you take the medicine, you recite the mantra and then you take it. So if you don't have time for chanting and singing, and then you just take it. It's already in the list. Okay. Now I think we make a short break.